SpaceX are building the chopsticks for the Florida Starship pad. All six Raptors are under ship 24 and it's been a busy week in space traffic. This is tomorrow's space news. Hello everybody, I'm coming to you this week just as a disembodied voice, but that doesn't change the fact that there has been another busy week down in South Texas. Firstly, let's talk boosters. SpaceX have released this image of all 33 Raptor 2s installed underneath Super Heavy Booster 7 whilst sitting on the orbital launch mount. Booster 5, however, has been sitting in High Bay 2, and if you cast your mind back to last week, you may remember it had one of its grid fins removed. It's just been reinstalled, however. This glimpse of hope was short-lived as a couple days later, B5 was chopped in half for scrapping. A few days later, Boca Chica Gal got a better look at the end of the road for this booster after more cutting had taken place. The test tank B7.1 has been testing, reaching cryogenic temperatures after being filled with liquid nitrogen, a cool 77 Kelvin or negative 195 degrees Celsius. It's still in the can crusher, the affectionate name for the mount designed to test the structural capabilities of the tank by pulling down using the strap, simulating different aerodynamic loads during flight. As well as B7.1, B7 proper has been testing again with the OLM venting the day after the test tank was tested. Booster 4, the Super Heavy booster which for so long was poised for the orbital flight test of a full Starship Super Heavy stack has been rolled down the highway back to the production site for what we believe is the final time. It's outdated, old engines, old designs and it serves no use in the development of the program. Hopefully its fate isn't the scrapyard though, it'd be a great museum piece. SpaceX also released an image of the three gimbling and three vacuum Raptors installed on Ship 24, which is a good transition into this week's ship updates. As well as six Raptors, Ship 24 also has the first payload bay inside a Starship with a special door designed for spitting out Starlink satellites. This white box being lifted into position beside it is the loader for the satellites and it was tested on Thursday. Eventually, Starlink V2 satellites will be pushed out of this box into the Starship, lifted up and repeat. From the outside, Star Factory progress seems to have slowed slightly, however I don't have the time to count how many beams there are compared to last week, so that is just a rough observation. I don't even have time to make a proper news episode this week, let alone count beams in a building. NASA Spaceflight graced us with another Cape flyover video last week, which is our way of seeing what SpaceX is up to at their Starship facility in Florida. Here you can see that the chopsticks for the tower at LC-39A are now being built. Florida's Mega Bay foundations are also very visible now, as well as the Starship Factory's foundations. Three, two, one, zero. Ignition and liftoff. <laughs> It's been a busy week for space traffic, starting with SpaceX and SES-22. This 3,500kg Luxembourgish communication satellite launched atop Falcon 9 B1073 from Slick 40 at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at 2104 UTC on the 29th of June, being delivered to a geostationary transfer orbit. This launch marked the 99th launch of a flight-proven Falcon 9 booster, so keep your eye out for the next flight, which will be marking the century. B1073 successfully touched down on a shortfall of Gravitas, one of SpaceX's drone ships, 666 kilometers downrange from the Cape. The following day, June 30th, at 1232 UTC, India reached for the skies once again this year with the launch of their Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle with no boosters on behalf of the commercial division of the ISRO New Space India Limited. Inside the payload fairing were DSEO, a Singaporean electro-optical and multi-spectral Earth observation satellite, NUSAR and SCOOBY, both are also from Singapore. We then had a double header of American launch vehicles, one from the land and the other from the air. Firstly, USSF-12 launched atop this Atlas V on July 1st at 2315 Coordinated Universal Time from Slick 41 at the Cape. Being delivered directly into a geosynchronous orbit, this is all we know about the payload being a classified Space Force satellite. The Atlas V was specifically in the 541 configuration, meaning the fairing was 5 meters wide, there were 4 solid rocket boosters and there was a single engine on the Centaur upper stage. The following launch was straight up from Virgin Orbit, utilizing Cosmic Girl, the Boeing 747-400 and Launcher 1. Cosmic Girl took flight at 0548 UTC on July the 2nd and dropped Launcher 1 approximately one hour later. The payload of seven US Department of Defense satellites were delivered to a 500km low Earth orbit with a 45 degree inclination. 
Your upcoming Earth departures for the next week are a Soyuz 2.1B with GLONASS K1, Starlink Group 421, 422 and the first flight of Starlink Group 3. As always, a big shout out to the citizens of tomorrow as they help to make all the content you love to watch from us possible. The lowest tier which gets your name in the show is the ground support level. We then have the suborbital citizens, the orbital citizens and the escape velocity citizens. On top of that, we of course have our tomorrow model 33 Cloud Pro Plus tier which allows the citizens to design their own slates. And here is Neurostreams. If you want to join all the people who you've just seen and see space news scripts as they're being written, exclusive Discord channel access, and watching the pre and post show hangouts surrounding the tomorrow live shows, consider becoming a member for just one US dollar a month at youtube.com forward slash TMRO forward slash join or the join button below. Thanks for watching this episode. Hopefully, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.